Hello, this is Yellow Recap. Join me for the highly rated HBO drama and thriller called Chernobyl. In April 1986, an explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the Soviet Union became one of the world's worst man-made catastrophes. This is episode one of a total of five. Before we start, click on the subscribe button to help me reach my goal of 1,000 subscribers. Caution, spoilers ahead. All right, picture this. Step into Moscow, April 26, 1988. In a gloomy flat, Valery Legasov records his thoughts on the Chernobyl nuclear catastrophe. He condemns Anatoly Dyatlov for his actions, believing he deserves death. Legasov hides the tape along with others outside, evading the ever-watchful car. Indoors, he marks time, tending to his cat and a cigarette. At 1 hour 23 minutes and 45 seconds, he takes his own life. Now, journey to Pripyat, Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, two years and one minute earlier. In an apartment, Lyudmila Ignatenko experiences a telling reaction, stepping aside to brew tea. Gazing out, the power plant stands visible in the distance. Abruptly, a brilliant flash erupts from the plant. Then, a larger, more intense burst follows. As Lyudmila re-enters her living space, the shockwave rocks the entire apartment. This rouses her spouse, Vasily. They peer outside at the power plant now engulfed in flames, casting an eerie blue glow into the sky. In the heart of Reactor 4's command chamber, we encounter Anatoly Dyatlov, silenced by shock. Upon news of a blaze in the turbine hall, he infers the control system tank's detonation. Foreman Paravachenko rushes in, revealing the core's explosion. Dyatlov dismisses this as shock, and Shift Chief Alexander Akimov, despite sensing grave trouble, soothes Paravoschenko, claiming an RBMK reactor can't explode. Akimov finds the control rod mechanism unresponsive. Dyatlov departs to lower them from the reactor's secondary command chamber. Stepping into an adjoining corridor, he gazes out of shattered windows, seeing dark mineral lumps below, yet pays no heed. A panicked operator contacts the Pripyat Fire Brigade. Vasily is summoned to action. Lyudmila frets, but he eases her, assuring her it's merely a rooftop fire. Deep within Reactor Building 4's core, Paravoschenko confronts a scene of complete devastation. His attempt to gauge radiation levels is hindered when personal dosimeters max out at 3.6 Rontgen and the high-range dosimeter is obliterated. Yet the peril's magnitude becomes clear as fellow worker Gorbachenko displays radiation burns. Paravochenko orders an evacuation, aiming to find pump operators Valery Kodemchuk and Viktor Degtaryenko. He only reaches mechanical engineer Alexander Yuvchenko before succumbing to acute radiation syndrome. Yuvchenko takes over, locating Degtaryenko with severe burns and injuries. Kodemchuk is obscured beneath debris in the once pump-filled room. Dyatlov re-enters the control room where Akimov reveals his attempt to lower control rods yielded naught. Dyatlov assigns trainees Viktor Proskuryakov and Alexander Kudryavsev to lower them manually in the reactor hall. Dyatlov then sends pump engineer Boris Stolyarchuk to restart water flow, averting a meltdown. He inquires about radiation levels. Akimov struggles to explain it's above 3.6 Röntgen. Dyatlov interprets 3.6 as the accurate reading, deeming it not great, not terrible. Akimov consoles Toptonov, reassessing their actions. As the firefighting team arrives and tackles the colossal blaze, Vasily's comrade Misha spots a chunk of the identical black mineral noted by Dyatlov earlier. He examines it before Vasily directs him to focus on Jose's setup. Misha experiences an unusual pain in his hand. Proskuryakov and Kudryavtsev advance to the reactor hall, encountering Yuvchenko carrying Degtaryenko. Yuvchenko accepts aiding their access to the reactor core, propping the heavy door open for rod lowering. Upon entering, they confront a nightmarish scene illuminated by the eerie core glow. Lethal radiation engulfs them rapidly. They flee the reactor hall, passing Yuvchenko with radiation burns forming on his hip and leg. Proskuryakov returns to the control room. Kudryavtsev succumbs to unconsciousness, barely reporting reactor destruction before nausea strikes. Dyatlov persists in disbelief, urging Akimov to summon the day shift and alert the local Communist Party executive. Outside, Vasily takes control of Misha's hose as Misha collapses in intense pain. A first responder removes Misha's glove, revealing his hand corroded by an unknown force. Vasily notices colleagues with burn-like injuries despite being far from the fire. In Pripyat, Lyudmila's neighbors watch the fire from a nearby railway bridge, unaware of falling radioactive ash. Meanwhile, Dr. Svetlana Zinchenko fears the ill-equipped hospital may need to treat radiation sickness patients. Senior doctors lack crucial knowledge, 
Director Viktor Brykhanov and Chief Engineer Nikolai Fomin arrive, frustrated a safety test escalated. Dyatlov assures them it's just a hydrogen tank explosion, a roof fire, and minor radiological release. Stolyarchuk realizes the explosion's true extent. Encountering injured Yuvchenko, who requests a final cigarette, Stolyarchuk witnesses roof firefighters dousing fire, water seeping into their room. Stolyarchuk reports reactor damage. Akimov enlists Toptonov to open coolant valves, despite Stolyarchuk's radiation concerns. Outside the facility, the day shift, led by Deputy Engineer Anatoly Sitnikov, observes the blazing remnants of Reactor 4. It's evident that the incident far surpasses a tank explosion. Sitnikov learns that no one remembers the location of their other high-range dosimeter. He heads to Reactor Building 2 for its retrieval. Bryokhanov chairs a local party executive meeting and echoes Dyatlov's claims of a minor accident. However, executive member Petrovich openly challenges this, highlighting the glowing air around the reactor and firefighters' evident radiation sickness. The executive's oldest member, Zharkov, delivers an inspiring speech. He emphasizes that their role isn't to debate the incident's scope. With Mikhail Gorbachev informed, their goal is to prevent the disaster's information from leaving Pripyat. This way, the Soviet Union can continue its duties without concerning over trivial matters like exploding nuclear plants. The executive team departs the meeting, invigorated by Zharkov's speech. Following this, Sitnikov arrives to meet with Bryukhanov, Fomin, and Dyatlov. He informs them that their high-range dosimeter malfunctioned upon activation but they managed to borrow a mid-range dosimeter from the fire department. The radiation level exceeds 3.6 Röntgen, reaching at least 200 Röntgen, potentially even higher. Moreover, Sitnikov investigates around reactor building 4, discovering graphite-like chunks implying the reactor core's unexpected explosion. Dyatlov and Fomin vehemently reject this as implausible. Sitnikov admits not knowing how it happened, leading Dyatlov to volunteer for an inspection from the building's top only to vomit and lose consciousness before doing so. Consequently, Sitnikov reluctantly takes on the task. As Akimov and Toptonov embark on their ill-fated mission to open cooling system valves, Sitnikov undertakes his equally doomed endeavor. Peering into the exposed reactor core from the ruined building's roof, he receives a deadly dose of radiation akin to Proskuryakov and Kudryavsev before him. Simultaneously, Dyatlov is led out of the administration building, revealing the extent of the dawn's destruction. Multiple firefighters, including Vasily, grapple with acute radiation sickness. In Pripyat Hospital, Dr. Zinchenko answers the call of duty as the first casualties arrive. In Moscow, a more youthful and robust Valery Legasov picks up the phone, learning from Deputy Chairman Boris Sherbina that he's been chosen for a committee overseeing the accident's management. While Pripyat's children head to school, Oblivious to the cloud of radiation gradually enveloping the town, none of them spot a lifeless bird plummeting from the sky due to the radiation's effects. Congratulations, this is the first episode of a total of five. Episode two is coming soon. Subscribe to receive notifications for episode two. Thank you for watching.